Uh, breaking news. Uh, Vince McMahon is officially not dead. No, I, boy, I'm we not were, believing it. Boy, we were having a lot of fun with the whole Vince McMahon is uh, dead uh, thing with him blowing himself up in his limo or whatever. Someone blowing him up in his limo. Sam uh, wanted to believe, and uh, he really did. And it was just, uh, just, uh, just uh, done, aw- just done very badly. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knew he was uh, alive. It was, uh, it was a gag. They had the um, FBI at first. They were saying the FBI was investigating, and then I guess the FBI got mad, so they had to go with the FIC, the Federal Investigation. Um, center. Center. Center, right. And, and they had some um, investigator that was always on the show, and he would do his interviews during Raw or SmackDown, <laughs> not not in his station house. <laughs> and um, yeah, Sam was believing it. He wanted to believe that Vince was alive. I'm sure he's relieved today that Vince is alive, but it's bittersweet for Sam because well, Chris Benoit is dead. And they're starting to say it's a double murder-suicide. That he shot his own son. I don't think he shot, shot him. I thought he did. Oh, I thought it was... Uh, now, now they're the, saying it's not a shooting. That's well, what I read uh, overnight. Well, the last thing I heard this morning driving in was there was no gunshot wounds or no knife wounds. So they're investigating how they died. Tell me he strangled them. Oh, oh may have. That's God. a very personal what? way to kill somebody. Yeah. You know, they did say that when the, the details of this case come out, people are going to be like, whoa. That's, uh, this yeah. This is a little different yeah. than the typical uh, double murder suicide. So I don't believe so, it. So there was no gun used? No, that's what I heard this morning on uh, Wins. Really? Probably. What did he yep. strangle? I bet he strangled them and then hung himself. So Sam, can, Sam, do you know? I mean, uh, that's nah. an awful way, to, especially your own son. I hope he didn't use some hacky wrestling move to take out his family. Oh. Yeah. He figure four leg locked them. That's an <laughs> awful have. way to kill your son, man. So, yeah. uh, what do we got, Sam? Uh, Sam, now, uh, what about Vince being alive? Well, we'll have to admit it. He's alive. Wait and see what happens. <laughs> Wait yeah, and right. see what happens. We'll you know, we know Vince just a little bit, and uh, I'm sure he's extremely bummed. Yeah. And his uh, his thoughts and prayers go out to the, you know. Thoughts and prayers. To, you know, Chris's uh, remaining family and all mm-hmm. that. But there's also part of Vince going, you wrecked my storyline. We had a great <laughs> bit going, and you ruined it. <laughs> What happened was Vince uh, made an appearance on live TV last night. Yeah. Of course, if he didn't, uh, all hell would break loose. <laughs> what an ass he'd look like. No kidding. Oh. Why Keeping the dead, why. the dead Vince bit going when an actual uh, family has been killed. Yeah, the dead uh, Vince bit was going on for about a month, and he was like, oh, my God. And it was working. It was getting a lot of talk. It was getting a lot of heat. Hey, People God, I was were... talking about wrestling for the first time in like four years. We hadn't talked about wrestling in a, in a long time, and then... Uh, this storyline was so bizarre and funny and out there that it was kind of fun to to play back and forth. And, and uh, Sam obviously believed that Vince had been tragically killed in that limo explosion, but nothing, uh, nothing at all uh, brought any uh, brought any facts of that nature to uh, the table. It was just a goof. But uh, now, 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 Sam, you saw Vince. Live last night, it couldn't have been pre-taped because he was talking about Chris Benoit's death, which has just happened. So it wasn't like he wasn't, you know, you taped it before his death somehow. He talked about his character, Mr. McMahon, being killed before addressing the fact that Chris Benoit was actually dead. Any comments on this and uh, uh, bringing up what you had believed and talked about uh, for about a month now? Um, what 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 do, what are your feelings about this? I'm going to no, what's happened? Go ahead. I'm going to reserve judgment. Yeah. On what's going on with Mr. McMahon until uh, next week. Do you? Th- <laughs> what? How do you reserve judgment? <laughs> no, it's let's, over. Yeah. It, let's. He's uh, he's dead. He's not dead. Here's Vince McMahon from last night in an empty arena. By the yes, way. Yes, it was empty. Just him and the mic in the ring. Wow. Good evening. Tonight, this arena here in Corpus Christi, Texas, was to have been filled to capacity with enthusiastic WWE fans. Tonight's storyline was to have been the alleged demise of my character, Mr. McMahon. Alleged demise. However, 
In reality, WWE superstar Chris Benoit, his wife Nancy, and their son Daniel are dead. Jeez. Their bodies were discovered this afternoon in their new suburban Atlanta home. The authorities are undergoing an investigation. We here in the WWE can only offer our condolences to the extended family of Chris Benoit. And there's a lot of wrestlers that die. Uh, he, he sounds really old. Yeah, like, what's, what's with his voice? That happened, something was going on with his voice. He might have been a little choked up. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Were they, were they friends? I mean, I guess they were, right? Yeah, he seemed choked up when he was... Oh, playing. yeah. Is the FIC checking into this, or is it actually the FBI or uh, local authorities? Looks or like is it... Uh, what was his name, the investigator? Daniel Beck. Daniel Beck. Is Daniel Beck from the FIC going to be uh, questioning uh, uh, wrestlers? No, Daniel at, Beck. At is, Daniel Beck is back in his cubicle doing like you know working on marketing ideas. And, I think Daniel and Beck sales is, pitches. He's back uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, I think the FBI said, "All right, we'll take it from here, guys. Thank you." He's back in accounting at the WWE yeah, exactly. building. Exactly. <laughs> Sam, are you thinking though? I, 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 Sam is trying to like. Are you are you thinking that they may have done something like? It's like when they mash up a Bush speech. And they make it into a U2 song where they take a bunch of different clips and they kind of make it uh, into something like that. Uh, are you are you saying that this is some sort of a creation of computer people? It didn't sound like Vince. Well, he did sound different. I mean, basically, you're saying that this is an old clip of Vince that they used and dubbed over words? I mean... I'm just saying you never know what's going to happen. Oh, shut up. It's over. Um, <laughs> you don't need to keep this storyline going. We'll, we'll, no, no problem. We'll come up with some new ones. Get out of here. What will Vince say? Get, get out of here. <laughs> Your bit got ruined. You had yeah. a good bit going. You had a Sam. great bit, a lot of visibility. You're, Every week you're, you're on. airtime. Oh, you're it, it's over. you got to be bumming. It's over. <laughs> we'll find something uh, else for you. Here's uh, the second half of Vince's announcement last night. And the only other thing we can do at this moment is tonight pay tribute to Chris Benoit. We'll offer you some of the most memorable moments in Chris's professional life and you'll hear tonight comments from his peers those here his fellow performers those here who loved Chris and admired him so much so tonight will be a three hour tribute to one of the greatest WWE superstars of all time tonight will be a tribute to Chris Benoit yeah, he was kind of getting a little misty-eyed. Wow. Oh yeah, he's been with the with the organization for a while now. So Vince has uh, seen a lot of uh, doom and gloom. Yeah, with I mean, his I'll... peeps between the uh, steroids these guys have taken that have ravaged their bodies and uh, suicides. Uh, have there been yeah. other suicides? Oh my yeah. God, there's so many wrestlers that have died. There, someone turned me on to the website. I don't have the uh, the address right now, but it lists all the the wrestlers that have dead died wrestlers in the last ten years. It's it's yeah. mind-boggling. Wow. It's mind-boggling, so... A lot of them just get their bodies to a point where uh, they just can't hold up with the steroids and everything. They wind up getting tumors. I, Lyle Alzado tumors. Did we get anybody from WWE today? Is there anybody who's, you know... Yeah, right. I don't, I don't think really anybody wants, wants to really talk about this I mean, we on can this try, show. But I don't think anyone's talking today. They'll think we're going to fun with it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. All right, we're going to uh, take a break and continue with other things. Lots to do today. It's the OPS show. Sam. We teased the Chris uh, Benoit thing. This uh, this uh, this Benoit thing is getting just out of hand. Well, who uh, who pretty much uh, guessed what happened? Huh? Who guessed we, what happened? We got Jimmy. Yes. Yeah, Jimmy did. Yeah. And we got info yesterday that turned out to be really accurate. That was released later in the day. Yeah. Uh, we got we got the um, the DA talking here. It's twisted. He had a very very busy weekend. Is it a real DA or is it uh, yeah, an employee yeah. of the WWF from the FIC? See, because I can't. I don't know what's real or fake anymore. Because Vince McMahon, as you remember, about a month ago, not even a month ago, was uh, blown up horribly in his limousine and presumed dead. It broke up our own Sam. He was very upset. They brought in an investigator from the FIC, the Federal Investigation Center. 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 Yeah. I just keep wanting to say commission or something. Center. Uh, because the FBI complained and said not to use their name in this bit. Uh, 
and, and Vince was presumed dead. They did a memorial for him and everything. And and uh, then uh, Chris Benoit apparently uh, uh, gets killed. Uh, at this time, they don't know how he did it. At the time, they were uh, Vince came out. But Vince then is alive and comes out on, on the, in the ring. Well, wreck the whole storyline. Wreck the whole storyline. You can't go with the Vince's dead storyline if one of your wrestlers really no. kills himself after killing his whole family. No. Kind of takes away from the and, bigness. <laughs> and they did a, like a memorial to Chris Benoit on Monday because they didn't really know the details yet. So they spent three hours looking back at his career, thinking just something went horribly wrong in his house in Atlanta. Yeah. Now the details are coming out, and now the WWE is pretty much uh, uh, pulling out the hose. Oh, that's it. Spray it down. Hose it off. Hose, hose it down and move on and make believe he, he never existed. Uh, Sam, what what have you noticed uh, different on the WWE website? Well, on Monday, they, they probably found out around 4 or 5 p.m. on Monday uh, that he was dead. And so the, the website was all Chris Benoit stuff. You know, see old videos, pictures, all his best stuff. Buy his merchandise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually when someone dies, the merchandise goes way up oh, for a while. Oh, yeah. So why not take advantage of that a little bit? Sure. But then yesterday, uh, once the news started coming out and the uh, details started coming out, everything was pulled off the website except for the news story. Yeah. So just the WWE press releases were there. But other than that, there was no Chris Benoit stuff. All his merchandise was pulled. I was reading that at a bunch of uh, toy stores, they were actually pulling Chris Benoit figures off the shelves. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. This guy was a bum. They should they should distribute him. He was he was you know. He was yeah. Just a, I guess they wanted to assume that perhaps uh, carbon monoxide poisoning, anything. It could something. have been anything. But then when the details started uh, coming out, well, uh, he uh, oof. They're they're leaning toward road rage, and and that's got everyone. Road rage. Road rage. Uh, what I say? Road, road rage. rage. Oh my god. Like his wife was walking down the hall too slow, and he uh, beeped, and she wouldn't move over. <laughs> got to get to the bathroom. There's a backup. I'm still thinking of the golf cart tee that uh, pulled me over with. Yes. Those other golf cars i had the road rage yesterday but yes roid rage and now people are like up in arms about that saying ah but i mean look at the details what else could it be is that a quote from someone <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> unquote well uh we got some audio from the press conference this is uh this is getting really twisted do you find any illegal substances any steroids any drugs that are of concern anything any illegal substance there were a lot of prescription medication uh, that he had received from doctors uh, with what we believe to be at this time legal prescriptions. What type of prescriptions? Um, that I'll have to get a full list and maybe be able to disclose later. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm not going to be able to give you that full list. Of that. They got the prescription drug. Yeah, they were um, anabolic steroids. Well, there's. Uh, I was reading an article today that. Uh, he felt like his kid was too small for his age. Yeah. And, and he was injecting uh, growth hormones into his seven year old. This this story is getting sick. Wow. What an ass this guy I didn't hear was. that. And I used to call Chris Benoit the world's tallest dwarf. He kind of had a dwarf like uh, look to him. Dwarfy look. Even though he, they're saying he was 5'10. I don't think he was 5'10. I think they upped his, uh, upped his uh, height. And I guess it, they said his kid looked dwarf like. And mm. I, this bothered Chris Benoit, according to this article I read this morning, and he was injecting growth hormones into his seven-year-old <sighs> to try to get him to, you know, to grow because he was uh, undersized for his age. That's, that's good. Screwy. That's a good way to treat your son. Because they found needle marks in the kid, by the way. That's uh, that's how. Oh. The, the boy's body was in his bed, which is in an upstairs bedroom. The, the female's body was found in what looked to me to be a family room that was also upstairs. Uh, Chris's body was in the basement in a weight room. How much time elapsed between the murder of the wife and son? Possibly, you know? From what we're gathering from the autopsy, it's my understanding that the the wife died sometime on, on Friday, that the son died probably Saturday morning, and that um, Chris Benoit died uh, later on Saturday. Oh my god. So he kills the wife first and then the kid's still in the house? Overnight. How twisted is that? Probably just close the door and make sure the kid stayed out and then, just and then You know anything yeah. about seven year olds, all they want uh, all they want to do is find their mommy. And yeah. mommy's dead in the house. They did that still Friday alive. night, he probably killed the kids Saturday morning, you know. Before he realized he was calling all the uh yeah. sending text messages to all the UFC guys Friday. 
Yeah, they're yeah. Weird messages. They were getting weird from him. text messages. Saying, from him. Uh, what, what were the text? Uh, he was uh, explaining uh, where his attack dogs were because I guess yeah. he had attack dogs, and I guess they knew this. And then uh, parts of his uh, of address. his address. Well, they, he gave out his address a, a lot. Uh, my physical address is blank, blank, blank. That was a text message. The dogs are in the enclosed pool area. So garage, he, he garage knew. side door is open. He uh, knew he was going for it here, at that point. Here's my physical address. Here's my address. Here's my physical address over and over again in text messages. He's, um... He, he killed the wife. I don't know, know why. I'm probably in a fit of rage. They had been divorced and bad. You knew it was some kind of domestic. She had a, like, like she was going to leave. It was. It's always one. She of had those. a restraining order back in 2003. Of course. And then three months later, she dropped all those uh, charges that were were pending or whatever. Hmm. He's a violent prick. This guy. There was blood on her head. There was a a, a, a massive struggle, and he uh, he choked her out or strangled her. And um. And then uh, did, the he use the the fi- the- did he use the figure four or <laughs> oh, was it a I real? Did that yesterday? Show? Probably <laughs> some kind of. <laughs> Wrestling move, like a triangle, and the and the son he probably um, they said he smothered the son, which is it's like a, you know because that's more of like a shame thing, like uh, v- strangling is so v- vicious and angry, man. That's like it's, it's smothering is like. Ugh. Where's Iraq getting his info from? Yeah, Iraq. Uh, that, that was yeah, in the paper were. today. Our too. hands and feet were tied up. Yes. Yeah. Her. And the son was uh, suffocated all. with a pillow. Yep. Yeah, that's all on the paper. I wonder if he well, grabbed the kid while he was sleeping. He might have just said... Uh, yeah, that's the wake kid up, was probably though. asleep. Of course he would. You don't sleep through that. But, I mean, the kid was probably sleeping. He probably put the pillow over his face. The kid oh, was sleeping, they're saying, early Saturday morning. All right, well, here's more audio from the DA. There, cool. I, I will say this additional information. There was a Bible placed at the, b- beside the, the body of each of the victims, and I thought that was somewhat bizarre. Were there any signs of struggle from the son or the wife? No. Uh, I, will, I will tell you uh, that the wife was bound on her feet and uh, I think also on her wrists. Um, there was some blood under her head. Uh, as far as I know, those were the only signs of a struggle. They were both clothed. Uh, she she was wrapped in a towel, I think, but, but wearing clothes underneath. Man, he had a busy weekend. <laughs> Oof. He had a busy weekend. That is just... So, e- Strangles the wife, tie, ties her up, strangles her. Then you got uh, the kid being smothered. And then he hangs himself in the weight room using the weights. Yeah. Um, you're familiar with weights that are, are attached to a pulley. It was the cord on the, the weights. Oh. So, oh, my God. How did he do that? Because uh, you wrap that cord around your neck and it, you put all the weight on it. Probably just yeah, he's probably like had to pull the pin out and put it down a little further because his big heavy neck. Yeah, he had but, that uh, big fat neck, and it's like no, all oh, the weights are gone. All right, let me put a little more weight. Ugh. He had to kneel though, I'm sure, and let it just kill him. Yeah, yeah, because you can't stand up. It's not that tall, so you just kneel down. Or he, or, he, or he he lifted it somehow and held it and then tied it around his neck and let it go. Oh, let her rip. Yeah, I'm guessing. I just hit myself in the helmet doing that. Ow. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know if his wife ever sought protection from him anyway, fearing domestic abuse? I have not seen the documents. I'm told that perhaps in 2003, a temporary protective order was sought, in, I believe, in the Fayette Superior Court, and later dismissed. What's a TPO typically sought for? I don't know. Uh, typically, they're sought for, for uh, some form of domestic violence, but not always. Not always. Wow, uh, I hope we get to find out why he uh, decided on that. Nah, you never find out. You don't think you'll find hey, out? He's you dead. Will, like three years from now, they'll do dead. an A&E story. You'll find yeah. out. Yeah, the- any true Hollywood stories. It could have just been an argument where, like, well, you know, we've all been mad enough to murder somebody, and when you're like, that strong, man, he might have been on that roid rage, all of a sudden you're choking your wife and she's dead, and then you're like, all right, now what? She's you know, why dead. Why would he tie her up? Why, yeah, why, would she, why would he tie her up? Maybe mm-hmm. she said she was going to leave. You can't, you know, uh, if you, you know, road, road rage after a couple minutes, you'll calm down. You're not going to tie her up and then, you know, scream at her and then choke her. Maybe he was trying to make it look like a, a, a break-in. Mm. Maybe he killed her, panicked, and said, uh, all right, this could look like a break-in. I could say me and my somehow try to figure out a way 
to, to make it look like she was killed during a home bur burglary and then realize I can't do then it. He, uh, then he uh, looked, at the, looked at the TV and uh, A&E's investigators was on and he's like, you know, no, nah, I'll never get away with it. Yeah, and then kill the son because this kid <laughs> would have no mother. Shows. And the father would be in jail forever, and then of course to kill. Well, didn't he have another wife? From uh, he has other kids and another wife. Yeah. He was married before. Uh, How lucky is she? Yeah, was, she's like got away from that guy. He knew a lot of the guys personally that uh, that died too in recent years. So we went on TMZ.com. They have a whole montage of wrestlers that have died in just in the last like I don't know up to ten years. Yeah, it's an unbelievable montage. You you, you can't believe it. Everyone from uh, Bam Bam Bigelow to the Boss Man to Elizabeth, who used to hang out with, uh, what, Randy Savage? I Did didn't know that uh, yeah. the Elizabeth Boss Man. Dead? Huh? Elizabeth? Elizabeth died of pills and alcohol. I didn't know she I remember her. And I don't even watch that Did, stupid sport. Well, I showed Ant because Ant doesn't watch a lot of wrestling, but he knew just about every one of them, too. The right, Big Ant? Boss Man was huge back in the day. Right, right. The Big Boss Man. He'd come out and kick some ass with his nightstick. Here it is. You got, uh, yeah, Chris Benoit. Uh, Owen Hart, of course, died during a match. Eddie Guerrero, Guerrero, I mean, um, uh, ravish, ravishing uh, Rick Root is dead. Yokozuna, Elizabeth is dead. The Big Boss Man, Earthquake, Dino Bravo, Mister Perfect, yeah, Mr. Bam Bam Perfect. Bigelow, the Junkyard Dog died in a car accident. They have Andre on there, but he was not expected to live too long. No. He was he was a massive. Human being, one of the road warrior guys, Hawk. Right, and then finally, I never heard of the last one. Uh, Sensational Sherry. Sensational Sherry also, also uh, dead. It's on TMZ.com. Dead wrestlers. Oh man, junkyard dog. So uh, Vince McMahon had to change his tune because on Monday he was kind of praising Chris Benoit's career, and they did a whole memorial to him, a whole three-hour special, right, Sam? Yeah. And then these details are coming out, and then Vince is like, "Whoa, we got to distance ourselves uh, from this guy." Yep. So he went on TV last night and had this statement? Yeah, he did. It's a, this one was a pre-taped one. It wasn't in the ring, but he put it on right before ECW came on last night. This guy's an ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hit the button at the exact same time, and I really thought oh, Vince really? said that. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. <laughs> I love the Vince. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm somber. Last night on Monday Night Raw, the WWE presented a special tribute show recognizing the career of Chris Benoit. However, now some 26 hours later, the facts of this horrific tragedy are now apparent. Therefore, other than my comments, there will be no mention of Mr. Benoit's name tonight. On the contrary, tonight's show will be dedicated to everyone who has been affected by this terrible incident. This evening marks the first step of the healing process. Tonight, WWE performers will do what they do better than anyone else in the world. Entertain you. I thought he was going to say, tonight the WWE performers will do what they do better than anyone else in the world. Steroids. <laughs> Die. That was a good way to handle it, though. Yeah, yeah. Come out and acknowledge it. Like, all right, look, 26 hours. I like that. Yeah, man. Vince ain't afraid of uh, coming out and, and, and laying it out there like that. But like, yeah, this guy killed his wife and his son. We didn't know. Yeah. Now address it. I, I like that, you know. Wish well, we could have taken away the tribute. Yeah. <laughs> we look like asses. You made me look like an ass. Phil Mushnick's going to have a field day with this. Oh, boy. God, does Phil so? Mushnick. The mush. Oh, the mush hates Vince. Yeah, yeah, but I bet... Plays right into everything uh, Mr. Mushnick says about Vince. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Steroids and blah, blah, Phil blah. Phil doesn't like Vince because Vince is an alpha male, and Mushnick... You can't tell where his, his neck ends. He's yeah. just, he's a nothing writer yeah. who probably had bigger dreams, and he's a curmudgeon. He's beat up in school by of people course, like Vince. He's a douche. Yeah. Here's the uh, the bullet points or the headlines on Chris Does Benoit. this go under fun facts or what? Wow, this is just twisted, twisted news Thursday. Uh, cops think uh, Benoit may have used choke, uh, a, cho uh, a chokehold, excuse me, to kill his retarded son. Oh, I don't think his son was retarded. I think his son was a little slow. Now he had like an autism thing. Yeah, an autism thing. Yeah, he had some kind of a growth problem. Fragile. What's it called? Fragile X or something? Yes, fragile X. I've never heard of fragile X, Very but rare. supposedly the you, you kind of new super villain. You kind of look like a normal kid, but then when you hit puberty, it's, it's when it kicks in. Yeah. 
and you are. It, it's it, I don't know if you, they say they keep saying retarded in the paper, um, and that it would I guess would have gotten worse. But it's a weird. It's a weird moment I'm watching as they continue. And again, this is part of the autism. Maybe they keep showing the father hugging him in the ring after he won, and there's, if you watch it, the kid's arms are out, in not. Uh, almost like you know, you put put your hands up. This is a stick up. Yeah, his hands are out like that. He's not hugging his dad back, which could have just been he was nervous. That to me seemed like an autistic thing, though. Like not yeah, hugging back, which I could just not mm. know what I'm talking about. And yeah, because uh, you're a Dr. Jim. Yes, and, and Benoit, Dr. Jim Thursday. Benoit and his uh, wife were fighting in recent months because she wanted him uh, to be home more, to spend help, a little more time with the kid, help raise the kid because obviously the kid has some problems and she needed help. And she really wanted him to, you know, to get off the road a little bit and, and start mm -hmm. spending more time at home to help her because it was, I guess, a real, real problem. But he didn't tell his friends even about that. No. A lot of people no. didn't know. And I'm wondering, was he, like, ashamed of his son? Which goes to show you, I think, yeah. Or was he, he trying would... just to protect him? Uh, I think that I... This guy doesn't seem like the type of guy, based on his recent actions, of somebody that might... My personal opinion, I think he was be ashamed. like that, yeah. Kid. I think he was a little ashamed. And, uh... Mm -hmm. Vince lost twenty million dollars yesterday as shareholders sell their WWE stock like crazy. Four times the amount of activity on that stock yesterday, and uh, the, you know he they, they said it's a good buy opportunity. They're saying that he uh, lost about twenty million yesterday. There's rumors that there's going to be another like steroid uh, controversy, big scandal, uh, scandal with his company. Hmm. And uh, obviously, being family entertainment and having this just horrific family tragedy happen doesn't help uh, help your company. Well, it was bad enough they had that big uh, steroid thing uh, happen uh, in WWF when it was WWF, uh, and uh, that was pretty controversial. A lot of the wrestlers were saying that a lot of them did steroids, and a lot of the deaths that happened uh, at a young age uh, for these guys were steroid related. But like you brought up. This is something a little different. <laughs> this is uh, some guy killing his family. Well, I'm and saying in the office when you get one of these wrestlers uh, dying in some like hotel in the middle of nowhere, it's obviously a tragedy. It's sad and all that, but this is so much different, man. He yeah. spent the whole weekend like you know killing his wife, his son, and then did you hear how he killed himself? We oh. Where he t he wrapped a cord around his neck from one of his weight machines. I'm thinking it's the pull down, by the way. We're pull down. To, we're trying to figure it out. And then he released 240 pounds to hang himself. Yeah, just let go. He let go on 240 pounds. Clang. Yeah, the weight goes clang and your neck goes uh, snap. snap. Goodbye. There's a lot of muscle on that neck. 240 yeah. pounds w was released using one of his uh, weight machines they said he might that he had in his home. He might have put his son in, a, son in like a choke hold, a sleeper hold. I'm yeah. guessing he put it in like a sleeper hold first. So yeah, because there's no marks on his son's neck like he was strangled. So they're thinking, yeah. That was a weird. Yeah, the uh, choke hold. He probably, I guarantee you he killed his son just because he freaked out and killed his wife and realized what's going to happen to this kid now. I'm going to jail. She, he's dead. got issues, yeah. This kid's finished, yeah. And then uh, the WWE mm -hmm. recently like, kind of gave him a demotion. Yep. Uh, wanted him to be more of a coaching type wrestler yeah. where they don't do as much action. They, Although, they, get, uh, they get in the ring. Agree. Huh? Although Sam doesn't agree with what, that. Sam? You don't agree with that, Sam? Yeah, I don't know if that's true because they just moved him over to their ECW branch and they were going to put the belt on him, I would assume, because the guy who subbed in for him he had an ecw title match at the pay-per-view he didn't show up for and the guy who subbed in for him they put the belt on him instead so i would assume they were going to put the belt on benoit at least for a little while no, <laughs> may, eh, that's maybe but maybe behind the scenes i mean the real stuff they're saying is maybe they really did demote him and tell him look you you got six months i mean maybe it was that could have been but but they they they, they seem to have demoted him which would have made him a freak out i'm sure even more yeah i mean you, to hear that you're not going to be uh, i mean he was 40 years old it doesn't seem crazy that they're going to knock him down a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of 40-year-olds doing the wrestling thing. Yeah. I mean, The Undertaker, how old is he, man? He's, all, he's right up there. He's like, he's got to be 40. Oh, he's way past he's 40. Something. something. Has to be. That guy I'm, years ago. And then sick of hearing about the, the steroids. I don't care if people do steroids. Why are we so... Who cares? Well, I think because uh, perhaps if it drives you to kill your family... Then stop with alcohol. Would, uh, people, no one's taking steroids and barreling into to, to children. I don't care if mm -hmm. athletes take steroids and hit a ball farther or they throw each other. I, I could care less. Yeah, I don't care either because I don't know these people. I don't know these people personally, so I don't care. Like, I, I want to see 600 foot homers. I've changed my tune on the whole steroid thing in, yeah. in baseball. Yeah, I want to see 600 foot homers. 
I want to see homers like leave the ballpark like uh, Mickey Mantle did the, back in the day. That famous homer they always uh, you know show you yeah. where it hit on on uh, the top ball. of Yankee Stadium or whatever. What I want to see homers like that. What if I want to see pitchers? find out though that it uh, makes people kind of nutty. I don't care. Then then you know what? It's a, it's a Bill Hicks bit, but then get rid of rock and roll. The greatest tunes were were. Were were recorded and written on on some Steroids. horrific drugs. <laughs> no, Steroids. but horrific drugs. There's a song called "Get Out of My Way, Bitch." Get out of my way, bitch. Well, there are some drugs. Great that music are... because of heroin. Great music because of cocaine. Great music because of crystal meth. Look, heroin. Great I, music because of alcohol. Heroin doesn't make people kill other people unless they don't have money to buy the heroin. Then they'll kill people. Uh, uh, pot. You smoke some uh, some pot, you're really not going to get all that violent. But uh, if you're doing crystal meth, uh, you're going to get a little violent. There are different yeah. drugs that do different things. I, I think steroids crystal meth might gives be... you some nice, you know, <laughs> crystal meth makes you insane. Yeah, it but you get you some great like music wanna, out of it. Want to hurt people? Uh, maybe steroids is like that, where it kind of you know gets into that part of your brain that makes you a little violent. Well, Roid rage. They got a word for it. Roid rage. Well, why should we care if we don't know him personally? I don't care. I well, don't care. The wife and kid. It's a little tragic. Dude, I mean, there's, there's uh, you know, music that was made on LSD and, and, LSD. and heroin. Yeah, it makes you to hurl yourself out a window. Kirk Cobain was, uh, her I, he was just a horrific heroin addict, and we got some great music out of him. Yeah. And then you kill yourself. If he was happy and uh, and he was sober, what what kind of music do you think he would have uh, made? <laughs> Benoit killed himself. I don't think anybody would care as much as if, uh, you know, he killed his wife and kid. Wait, Jimmy, How though, often does this happen, kid? though, with steroids? Look at booze does, man. This this literally, yeah. people murder We're being their wives every day. There, in this country, there's at least one murder a day because of alcohol. You, you won't let them have a drink. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? It's like... <laughs> Fix me a drink. I don't care about the steroids. I don't, like, I, I don't care what it does to them. If they know what it does and they want to take it, let them. Yeah. I could care less. It's not my business. Yeah, we're... we're Kind of hypocritical. Oh yeah. Yeah, we kind of bury the alcohol thing. The alcohol is the worst of them all. You know, the worst. I don't hear a lot of steroid-related deaths. Well, not a lot. Not a lot of people, uh, as compared to people drinking, are doing steroids. Oh, we kind of like allow that to happen for whatever reason. Yeah, it's been around for years. We we even tried getting rid of alcohol. Look what happened. It made something called the mafia. Yeah, <laughs> but you know like what I'm saying. We love the, the mafia. The violence associated with it is like accepted. The drunk driving deaths, and they're trying to have all these laws about this, and it happens every day with alcohol. Do you understand why? Because drinking is fun. So it's steroids. Fun for most people. How great would it be to be muscular and just beat everybody up? I would that love would that. Would be. But doing Fantastic. steroids is fun for some people. Is it fun? Doing or heroin is, it just... is fun for some people. Doing crystal meth is fun for some people. The cokeheads out there, they would tell you that's fun. It's fun for everybody. But I have changed my drinking. Tenor. I don't care what the performers do. Yeah. Nah. If someone in my family is doing it, then it's a different story. Then I care. Yeah. Because I'm close to the situation. No, you're just localizing yourself. Yeah. You're not. You know, it takes a village over. <laughs> we must care about our neighbors. Speaking of, uh, I love when I take the side I really don't give a crap about. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but what if the violence in? Um, I'd like to make this announcement. I could care less. <laughs> Stone Cold's wife says drug abuse and domestic violence are big in the WWE. What? Looks like uh, Stone Cold's not going to get a lot of uh, a lot of work with Vince. In These the, in big the near future monsters that are perhaps doing steroids are are treating their wives improperly. How? Oh, why I? But Sam's going to, like, defend that. Uh, Sam? What's going on, Sam? Well, I don't know. The WWE just put out a press release that uh, they don't like the sensationalistic coverage of the uh, of the Chris Benoit thing and everybody saying roid rage. Because the they... sensationalism, it's just facts. This guy went on a murder spree. Yeah, I don't think this has been that big. Like, th this is the same coverage I missed got, which was disgusting. But this is a guy who killed his wife and son, and we're learning things about it. I don't think it's that sensationalistic, actually. Well, they... Sensational. They were just saying that uh, that in a press conference, the authorities stated that all drugs found in the house were believed to be legal prescriptions. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I read an article mm -hmm. that they said they found steroids. They, they said I legal read it in the paper steroids. Today, and I believe everything I read in the paper. <laughs> they did say prescribed steroids. 
Maybe it's a oh, right. I'm just uh, reading off a press release. Uh, okay. Uh, steroids were not and could not be related to the cause of death asphyxiation. Authorities had no factual basis basis to speculate as to Benoit's state of mind and rightfully and rightly did not do so. Uh, toxicology tests. What did you have for dinner last night? I had uh, fish sticks and some leftover chicken fingers <laughs> and uh, microwave f- uh, French fries. He never, <laughs> never disappoints. Sam? Do you ever go to the bathroom, or is your whole system clogged? I go to the bathroom sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Wait, wait till your metabolism slows down. You're going to be a fat boy. He's a skinny you, guy. You still got youth on your side, He's man. A skinny young guy. You he, can eat what he wants. Just in case. He just wants to eat like an eight-year-old. To bring more people on board, yes. We've discovered that Sam's diet is one of an eight-year-old. You are part of this a giant chicken holocaust. <laughs> That's all you eat. That's You're true. like the Adolf Hitler for chickens. <laughs> and what was dessert? I had a good humor ice cream bar, one of those uh, <laughs> chocolate with the vanilla ice cream, you know? Yeah. Do you eat the chocolate off of it first? Not, I mean, maybe bite by bite. You like them soft or, or hard? Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you slap the good humor bar on your face before you enjoy it? <laughs> Pretend you're cuffed. There's well, a uh, Benoit update, too. This is really a creepy Yeah, movie. that's kind of, like, really eerie. Kind of uh, adds a little element of, uh, ooh, mystery into this whole thing. Apparently, yeah. I love the gossip. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, uh, on Wikipedia, there was a posting... Uh, about 13 hours before the police were informed that uh, Benoit's wife and uh, kid were dead, uh, that said that his wife is dead. And it was on Wikipedia before the cops were ever informed or anything. And they checked the IP, and it came from Stamford, uh, Connecticut, which is where WWE is based. What's that? And he went oh, there. Wrestling. That's like their headquarters. <laughs> What's that? What's that? That's like WWF, only they changed the name because the World Wildlife Federation was oh, okay. going crazy about right. it. They didn't want the idea that little panda bears were wrestling and yeah. <laughs> choke-holding each other. Uh-huh. Although I would pay to see that. Sure. Cute little animals just beating each other sure. bloody. Yeah. <laughs> but it was on the web reported uh, 13 hours before police found the bodies, yeah. Who so somebody it? that was involved in the murder just was like, we got to, oh, we got to update his Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, they're like, really? Really quick. Yeah. On, like, uh, I don't know. Should we wait? Nah, because what if somebody looks him up and, you know, we want him 10 to seconds know. after the murder? The wife is dead before the cops even do. Yeah, you don't call oh the God. police. You don't tell anyone. You post it on Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah. Wikipedia. Got to get the facts it. straight before you call the police. Well, they, everybody wants to be the person that up, updates the hours Wikipedia. Before. So Yeah. yeah well, 13 hours. Down. They took it down. They took it down. No confirmation. They, they're like, hey, you can't just put that the guy's wife is yeah, dead without confirmation. confirmation. Now. But now they're, now trying, there is, yeah. now they're trying to figure out who would, at the office there, uh, you know, posted that. Apparently he was texting people, um, telling them where the dogs are. Uh, the attack the dogs. The attack dogs and that which His address opened and... His address, so he, uh, I guess he kind of knew he was doing this. I can't he get over the stand. fact he that... He wrapped the cord around his neck and put about 250 pounds of weight on his weight machine and then let it go. You know, that's <sighs> that's the part that really disturbs me. The whole thing is sick, but the fact that he uh, let 240 or 250 pounds go on his neck. Yeah. That is sick. What do you think he used, the pull-down? Yeah, we figured it, it had to be the pull-down. Use the pull-down. And let go. And then what? You, you what? tie a rope around it. And well, then you just let go of it. Well, you just pull, do the pull down, and and you know the cable. Yeah. Wrap your neck around that cable, and then let go. What cable? You mean how he hung himself? Yeah. 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 He used kind of, the he used the weight machine. Oh. Yeah. God, so geez. he put like 240 pounds on. I'm saying I think he pulled it down, and kind of attached something to it, wrapped it through his let neck, the and then just like let this. it go. Well, yeah. he probably had it attached first. He probably had it attached first, uh, and then like partially around his neck or whatever, and then lowered it down, and yeah. then just moved his arms and let it snap him. I wonder oh. if he was being a you know a jockey ego guy about it, like yo, I could do six two four. <laughs> <laughs> there you four. go. Let me put the pin down <laughs> even further. Yeah, I'll put man. it down for it. I could do two four. That's nothing. <laughs> he wants to choke myself with that. <laughs> mind no if problem. I work? If somebody comes up, mind if I working with you? What do you want? <laughs> he, he wanted the investigators to go. Wow, at two forty. Two forty. Look at that. I'm not some pussy. You don't try to lift that. <laughs> Uh, steroids found in pro wrestler's body. The Chris Benoit story continues. Yeah, this story doesn't go away. 
And we're learning uh, some things this morning. Investigators said Tuesday they found steroids and other drugs in the body of pro wrestler Chris Benoit. No surprise there. Who Mm -hmm. killed his wife and young son last month before hanging himself in the family's home. Besides steroids, uh, Benoit's body contained the anti-anxiety drug Xanax and the painkiller hydrocodone. Hydrocodone? Yeah, painkiller. Uh, according to a statement from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. Uh, no alcohol in his blood, by the way. Uh, Benoit's wife, Nancy, tested positive for Xanax, hydrocodone, and the painkiller hydromorphone. Ooh. Uh, the son, Daniel Benoit, mm-hmm. who was very young, what, seven years old, had Xanax in his system. Ah. Uh, the GBI said it could not perform tests for steroids or human growth hormones on the son because of a lack of urine. In the son's body, but basically they're saying that the the kid had a lot of Xanax in his body, really? way past. Oh, so he was all like, Meh. way past the uh, suggested amount that an adult should have. In so his he body. was sleepy. Well, basically he he tried to kind of you know numb the kid a little bit before he uh, did what he did. Before he put him in that chokehold. Uh, Eef, what an awful thing. Yeah, this doesn't give as much details as the story I was reading in the paper today, but some. I mean, the amount of Xanax in, in all their bodies was just beyond ridiculous. Really? How much they had in them, yeah. So mm. he was trying to numb them up a little bit before he did what he did. So that's the, that's the update there. Oh, what's going on? New, uh, new information on uh, Chris Benoit? Yeah, they're saying that he uh, needed the steroids. What? For some kind of condition he had, yeah. Oh. He needed a lot of steroids for a condition he was uh, he was fighting. <laughs> Grotesque when kids are killed or die. People put the little bunny rabbits up by the wall and really, it's just creepy, eerie. Stop haunted house. Who's gonna move in there now? It's a beautiful house, probably real dirt cheap now. Ah, you, see, just... you wake up and the kid's leaning over your bed, like Ugh. two inches away from you. I'm hungry. Oh my God. Ah, ah. You keep hearing weights just going clang. How many people basement. do you think are living in houses right now? And there was some horrific thing that happened back in the day. Oh. And they have no idea. No idea. No idea because the realtors aren't going to tell you. That is always like told, just the creepiest thing to me. Well, I told you when I was looking for, uh, you know, to buy a place here in Manhattan, I went through this beautiful brownstone early on in the process, and I didn't understand why they were selling. And uh, we went through the whole house, and uh, the the mom was very anxious, and she's following us, and she's like, she's needing, she's like cleaning up as we go, even though she cleaned up the place ahead of time, but she's just straightening up as we're as we're going along. She wanted this house sold so bad. I'm like, wow, man, they're they're a bit anxious, and you know the deal when you're dealing with real estate, you don't want to look too anxious. Yeah, you know you're gonna get screwed in the deal, right? Mm-hmm. So we leave, and then the realtor, I'm like, all right, what's the deal? There's obviously something going on. Well, uh, their 17-year-old son committed suicide in that house. Oh. And then I'm like, all right, next, next house. Show the black light in his room and just <laughs> splatters all over the place. Well, then I was going back over our little tour, and I'm trying to figure out what room it was in mm. and, and trying to figure out by, I'm trying to remember how she was acting in each room, which room it was. Did he do it in one of the bedrooms? Did he decide to be selfish and do it right in the uh, the living room? Yeah. Did he do it in the shower? I don't know. What what tipped you off? Like the room you walked into when she covered her face and cried and ran into the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the room. <laughs> this is this music's too early for our for our fans. Very creepy. This is creepy. People are waking up to this right now. I had that house that I uh, well, me and my family lived in. Me and my brother, my sister, and my mommy lived in that house uh, in Huntington. And uh, right after we moved out, a guy moved in with his two kids, and um, they came home from school one day. Uh, opened the door, walked in the the little foyer, foyer that I had walked into many times after uh, I'd gone to school. And uh, the father shot both of his kids in the head and then shot himself. And there they were, just bleeding all over my uh, floor, the linoleum that I helped my mommy put in. And, and, the, the, um, and the reason you know this was because it was all over the newspaper yeah. and all over TV. And, yeah, you're, right. and you're looking at pictures of this horrific crime scene, Ooh, remembering that's... when you had a Christmas tree in that hey, room. Great, yeah. And great times in there. But there are people that are, live in places, you know, uh, when I was living in an apartment in Brooklyn, it's an old apartment. you got to figure the room you're sleeping in, someone just dropped dead in there. That's why I like new construction. 
Although the house that they plowed under, who knows what happened in there? Indian burial ground. Yeah. <laughs> Something. They didn't move. They only moved the tombstones. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy. If you're Does that bother you at all, it would bother the hell out of me. It would bother me, yeah. I mean, uh, sure. It would be yeah. energy there that I wouldn't like. Well, I, I wonder like what kind that. of sex people had. Like, what has happened oh, in this bedroom? See, it always goes to sex with you. Why? Because we think of horrific death, and I'll, you think of sex. Because I'll tell you why. Death may not have occurred in any place you're living in. Sex almost undoubtedly did. Yeah. So you wonder what different stuff happened in this room I'm in. Mm -hmm. Was it kinky? Was it loving? Was it awful? Was it, uh, oh, you yeah, know? Baby. But you know what happened. That's oh, better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Well, hotel rooms are great for that, too. You just never know what oh. happened in a hotel room. Dirty. Ugh. I don't like the idea of using the remote and then, like, grabbing a handful of the grapes that are there <laughs> on the fruit plate. And you're like, oh, the remote. Because you know after you have sex. and That's a little, the first thing you grab. <laughs> you, you grab the remote. I know. And, How and to turn on ESPN. Not even the first thing that you grab. The first thing you grab is usually either the sheet or... Or some tissues. <laughs> you know? It's just kind of... You know, what's the matter, Jimmy? Tissues. Tissues. You don't... Now they stick. No, I'm not talking about really to clean that up. I'm just like, you know, to... to maybe something got oh, all right. everywhere. Okay. You know, maybe something just an explosion. Save yourself a cleaning bill. Yeah, yeah. And just so you don't have to... You get it back into bed and go... Ah! 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 You know, and then those go flying on the floor because you know, someone else has got to pick them up. I don't care. Yeah, but you don't. But then you grab the remote, and there, maybe there's something on your hands. You don't feel the weird energy when you go through a house and uh, wonder about uh, what kind of sex was right. done in that no, place. That's true. I feel weird. I definitely feel weird energy in houses. Absolutely. Sure. I never had that feeling. And, like, obviously, old houses in particular. And you would say, well, old houses are creepy to begin with, and that's why you feel the energy. I don't feel it in every old house. No. No. But I definitely feel things in certain houses. I'm like, let's get the F out of here. Mm. I didn't look at that many. Like, when I looked to, to, for my place, it was just a few places I, I, I looked in, and I didn't really get any weird vibes in any of them. No. Same thing with houses. There I didn't get place... weird vibes. I got, like, this place sucks. Yeah. No, there was a place on uh, Riverside Drive, old, uh, very old building that they redid completely, and I walked through that place, and I was like, no way are we living here, and it was beautiful, but I got a vibe in that joint, and and then they told me that, yeah, the, the building's at least 150 years old. Man, a lot of stuff happened there. They redid the whole thing, and I swear to you, I felt an energy that I, I was like, Ugh, Probably no. some whoopings given in that no, in that place. It was just creepy. I just got like the the hair was standing up on my arms and stuff. Yeah, there was something going on there. Mm. My brother like lived in a haunted house. He he swears to it back up there in White Plains. He swears by it. Faucets going on in the middle of the night. Doors slamming. All sorts of crazy Isn't crap. Isn't this very like? It's easy to confirm. How come people are like I was haunted? I don't, only me. If they were real, like, I love these paranormal jackasses that go into these places with all kinds of mis machinery and don't find anything. Yeah, that's a good point. But, I mean, when you're living in that situation, you have no doubt in your mind, you know? Yeah, but how ca then why wouldn't you just run video all the time? Well, maybe, uh, maybe it doesn't get picked up by the video. Oh, stop. That's what I Camera think. Camera-shy ghosts. Maybe ghosts. Maybe, maybe they're union actors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you th why do ghosts have to paid? Why do you have to see ghosts? Just because that's how it's uh, portrayed in movies? No, and, but you and, would see some old... kind of weird activity happening. Like, the, there was something that was the creepiest damn thing, and it, it was obviously some kind of gimmick, but it was uh, when webcams first really getting popular, and a lot of people were... Uh, just going on the chick webcams, the college webcams, things like that. But there was one, it was a haunted house cam. And the, all the cameras were black and white. And you could go to various rooms in the house and just look at down the hallways. Ugh. like And then they had the basement and the crawl space was one of them. Ugh. And it's like a lot of people have reported seeing a white uh, see-through figure uh, moving at the end of this hallway and you'd look at it and I'm like I can't look at this because if I see something I'm going to drop dead <laughs> I just cannot take anything like that creepy cameras you're switching around to different rooms this room was you know uh, uh, used 
uh, as a nursery and the baby died and there's all kinds of weird stories in there and <laughs> I just could not <clears throat> look at these cameras. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't be able to do that. Let's say hi to Joe in Rockland County. Joe, what's up? Good morning, boys. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. I got a, kind of a funny story. I work for Con Edison down in the city and we're in basements and people's houses every day and you would be amazed at the sound and the energy you feel in somebody's homes. I totally agree with all. Yeah. You go, you go in somebody's houses and, and it's just like you go in these dark, dingy basements and you see like shadowy things and, and noises. And you hope, you pray it's just a rat because God forbid it's, you see something and it's like, ah, you're out of there. You know, it's, Look, I, I don't. I don't know what it is, but I definitely feel an energy in, in some houses yeah. when I go through them. I, I just, I know that. Um, I don't know what the, what it could be. Maybe uh, maybe there's too much electricity being pumped through the house because it's old. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what it could be, but I definitely feel creepy feelings in certain houses. Yes. Mine's it's just scary. this fear. Yeah, I agree with you. It's scary. <laughs> right, Mine's just you, fear. I'm a baby when it comes to things like that. I was doing a job once at this uh, huge, like, old estate had to be 180 years old, and they were renovating it and turning it into a country club somewhere on the North Shore of Long Island. And we were the first ones in to pull out old uh, uh, radiators and um, copper piping and things like that. And uh, it was just me and two other guys on our crew and this huge place. So we went exploring around the place. Oh, and man. it was four, like four stories with these spiral staircases and huge stairs and... And uh, big rooms with fireplaces in them. It was just a beautiful estate, but it was abandoned for so long that you'd open up these rooms and and wonder what happened in them over the years. And uh, just getting there early in the morning where it was still kind of dark and you're just there with your flashlight. Oh, so scary. So goddamn scary. Just because if I saw anything, that's it. And I'd be, I'd be walking, just going, "Please don't see anything. Don't see anything, because you'll go crazy. They'll just lock you up in an institution." If I saw something like that, just put me in the mental ward, yeah. because I'd just be freaking out. And why are we so scared? Like a ghost, you know, you're not going to lose a fight against a ghost. But how do you know? The ghost is going to punch right through. And you, you don't want to see this. You don't want to <laughs> see like. <sighs> here it is. Here it is. <sighs> I'd be like, what? What is it? Oh, what was that? <laughs> Anthony, 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 come with us. Walk into the fireplace. No! But see, I would freak out. But see, the ghost can't kill you. He can with fear. With Keep fear? you up all night, too, rattling, causing a ruckus. Yeah. A ruckus, I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. What would a ghost would do is like, every time it piped up, you went, would you shut up? And just got really... I had... You weren't afraid of it, you just hated it. All right. Right already, I heard, boo, I get it. That <laughs> <laughs> would be funny. You got probably, me. It would probably really piss the ghost <laughs> off. Just oh, this guy's unscarable. Just turn a really big fan on because it can't hold its form. <laughs> now, oh, then it would just blow away. Now what are you gonna do? Fans. Now what are you gonna do without those bones and skin? <laughs> Being haunted by fog. <laughs> right. <laughs> Chris, what's up? Hey, uh, I wanted to tell you, I had worked for a demolition company uh, in in Brooklyn. We were um, in charge of opening up walls so the asbestos crew could get in, and it was in uh, an abandoned building in Kingsborough Psychiatric. So every day we would come in because there was no power in the building. They shut it all off, and there would be one outlet that we could find way down in the mechanical space, and we would hook it up, with, you know, two clips, hook it up, and and pretty much do most of the work from this one freaking outlet. Uh, we would come in the next day, and the outlet would be care the uh, wire from the outlet would be carefully removed and laid on the floor. And the two wire nuts laid right next to it. So every time we hooked it up in the morning, we would come back uh, that the, uh, at the evening. Uh, they would we'd come back the next morning, and the thing would be completely disconnected. It was probably the job super, so the, a fire wouldn't start. <laughs> or some just yeah. meddling kids. Unbelievable. Yeah. Right. And that's not really a good ghost story, though, that it actually helped you, helped in fire safety, and helped <laughs> yeah. put the tools away. I came back, it my truck out. was washed. <laughs> <laughs> I was horrified. All right, Chris, thank you. Yeah, but Chris my is convinced was something washed. was going on. What can I tell you?
Chris Benoit. Oh, boy. Yeah, I guess they just released uh, some of the voicemails mm -hmm. that the family got, like, that he left. Why would they release this left to the public? The, some news story that I was watching, like, this reporter was complaining about how it had taken months for him to get this under the Freedom of Information Act. Like, it was, like, he was mm -hmm. in debt, you know, somebody was in debt to him to give up these voicemails, but there's one from Benoit. It's like, before he did anything, he's just saying, I love you. And the rest are from, like... These his, are the last uh, messages, basically, though? Yeah, I think that's, family? that's the last... All right, Chris calls uh, his wife and kid. Yeah. Hi, oh. yeah, honey. Hi, Dan. Dan. Sorry, Miss Kill. I'll turn this up on. Love you, bye. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Chilling. <laughs> but then... <laughs> fucking heart-stopping. Chilling. And then Chris's son leaves a Shitty message. This is really creepy. Him. Hi, Paul Bear. Back soon, okay? Uh, we'll just be there, okay? Uh, hey, Pooh Bear. Hey, Pooh Bear. What's wrong with you, dude? <laughs> no. What the fuck is wrong? <laughs> no. Anthony. No. Anthony. I no. leaned on no. the machine no. by Anthony. accident. No. There's something so no. fucking wrong with I you. I leaned man. on the machine with my elbow by yeah. accident and it hit a button. Where's dude, the old there's Anthony? a fucking line, dude. Where's I don't even. The old I don't even know what it hit. What no. was that? I didn't, yeah. I didn't hear it. Listen I, uh, to me, dude. There's yeah. a fucking... You talk about the chick and the fucking husband fucking the mom. <laughs> put Sam on my lap. Put the fag on. Fucking with the little kid blowing the guy, the fat Dutch head. But that's too far, dude. You can't make the fucking splat sound. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Okay. Besides, you went over the audio. Can we listen right, to this again? play it back, then. Hi, Paul Bear. We'll be oh. back soon, okay? We'll just be there, okay? okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Guys, this is fun. I can't even. <laughs> Why this is stupid? <laughs> it's not in good taste. Problem? Do, do you understand? <laughs> problem. This is fucking not like I don't. It's a fucking little. This is not fucking right. Do you look at me? Do you know what calmer is, motherfucker? <laughs> you're gonna be doing 150 on a shitty Long Island road with Keith the cop, and you're fucking with karma like this. Commas? Why is it karma? Karma. Karma. Yeah. Fucking okay, karma. Yeah. He's um, gonna be doing uh, sentences. An apostrophe or nothing for me. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? Um, Sometimes I'm a bad boy. Yeah. 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 Dude, this is just fucking... Dude, that's a little kid. Dude. I know. It really is tragic, and I have to do that to cover up for how bad I feel about listening to it. Yep. I have to make fun, because if I listen to it, I'll probably cry. Yeah? Mm. Fuck no. You're gonna be okay! <laughs> <laughs> I fucking left my emotions somewhere way down the line years ago. In Mexico? Every emotion just... Gone. You got not, I'm like a fucking Terminator oh. now. I just don't. Just, just I can't be reasoned to or bargained with. <laughs> you melt and form into other people. <laughs> it. Chris's uh, wife's friend leaves a message for her. Oh. Oh, Hi, Nancy. It's Marnie in Canada. Just phoning to see no! if everything's okay. I heard terrible <laughs> reports on the radio, so just calling to confirm. So hopefully we can help you <laughs> Wait, wait, she's <laughs> confirming the deaths? Yes. All right, wait. A whole, Whoa, there's what? There's a whole yes. different thing going on now. So this chick know. just read in the what? paper. The, she reads in the paper that he may have killed his entire family. So this dumb broad calls. Hi, are you dead? Calls, calls yes, her. Calls pretty much what it is. Hi. Listen, knowing. Trying to find out if you're dead. <laughs> she just <laughs> read. <laughs> you know how fucking f just fucked up on so many levels this is? She just read the track. And you're creating a fucking a, a army of detached assholes. Look at these fucking assholes. They're just detached from anything fucking civil. Bobby, on, you get so emotional. Uh, they're, they're really on a, just a bench, like a fucking dirty softball team, <laughs> waiting not to have any feelings in life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Christ. You alright, Bobby? Uh, <laughs> you too far? No, I'm, this is just fucking ridiculous. Well, it's ridiculous that this lady read or or uh, saw it. 
this tragedy and then had to call her friend to confirm if she's still alive. Hmm. And that dumb Canadian voice, too. Hello. Warm beer. Listen, listen again, really. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. It's Marnie in Canada. Just phoning to see if everything's okay because we've heard terrible reports on the radio. So just calling to confirm. So hopefully we can talk to you soon. Bye. We're just calling to confirm that, that you're calling dead. Confirm yeah. that you're dead. She she says, dead. Hopefully, uh, hopefully yeah. we can talk to you soon. Yeah, Hi. reservation uh, for the rent a car is Thursday. <laughs> just, um, <laughs> got some terrible reports here of your death. You know what I hate no. about Canadians? Too? If they you're always, dead, please call back. Canadians always have to say Canada in every sentence. Yeah. <laughs> it's just us from Canada. From no Canada. Shit. <laughs> I can hear your shitty accent. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... What if, uh, what's all this death stuff about? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you're all dead in your hoose. <laughs> well, you know, it's winter time. We just got a moose. We're going to send some moose pudding lip down. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck does that? She sounded too calm. was like, um, look, um, I'm oh very God. nervous oh, and scared. No. We're please pick up. Please. Yeah. It's like, okay. Well, if you're dead, then I won't talk to you, but if you're, if you're alive, please call. That Vince McMahon, he's crazy. This bit is going a little too far. Maybe that's it. Yeah, they probably thought or it was a maybe bit. Maybe they thought it was a fucking, you know. Yeah. They probably a thought work, it was a as they say in the business. A work. Is that what they call it? That is what they call it. Yeah. yeah it's is work. that what they call it? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm watching wrestling to try to find out if it's real or fake. She had no Bobby, worry in her voice. Bobby's got to tell. What's that? Uh, speaking of wrestling, you got to tell. What's the tell? It's you lower your voice when you want to fuck like Sam and other people. <laughs> when I what? You, you want to fuck all, him? When, when <laughs> he does. Yes, he does. No, yeah. what? What? Sam Hang knows. On. When Hang you on. get horned up, you're all saying like. Oh, <laughs> that, that, yeah, he goes from first of all. Let me tell you something. I don't. Dude. I had a big fight with my wife Dude. about this too because she got mad at me. That I I don't get horned up anymore. Nothing gets my dick hard. I told him I was like, listen. You don't make my dick hard. You have to. You, you, <laughs> oh, that's no, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is what I said. Let hear me out. And I know a lot of guys are going to relate to this. I'm going to go. I said my dick doesn't get hard for you. You have to make it hard. You it, it doesn't pop up because you come out of the shower. Oh my god, a naked woman. Fuck that. It's like an old dog. You have to come over, rub its belly, Holy give it a treat. Shit. Oh, you're talking about your dick. Yeah. Okay. You, you, <laughs> you can't just... Because what happens, I, seriously, honest to God, girls get mad that you know, you're know lying in bed and your dick just doesn't... Fu oh, my God, I'm in bed with my wife and my dick isn't... Oh, my God. If you And she's like, I wanted to have sex last night. Well, then why don't you touch my dick? That's the only way we're going to fuck is if you grab my dick, suck it, lick it, flap it. Tease it, whatever. Sammy's talking to you. Get it hard. No, look at me, you. Sam. Look at my. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> see how the voice drops. Yeah, yeah. Sam, look Sam. at me. Look Sam, at me. Sam, I want, I want you to do me a favor. Zip that up and put it over your head. No, I'm not doing anything. Yeah. I, want, I want you. Like, get, listen, fantasies. I want you. I want you to get a basket. Yeah. And I want you to put that hood on, and I want you to walk around the forest of Central Park. <laughs> and, I'm the, and I'm the big bad wolf. <laughs> Yo, little yellow riding hood. That's what I want. You never explained. Remember when we did the Comedy Central pilot? Yep. Why'd you kiss me on the mouth? Because look at that mouth. You kissed him on the mouth? Look at that. You did kiss him on the mouth. You got no upper why? lip. Yeah, but why did you kiss him? Why? You look, you look like a little baby lion cub. You made, no, <laughs> you made Sam kiss homeless guys, and then you kissed him. <laughs> there was no reason for you to kiss me. It had nothing to do with what we were doing. You know what sucked about that? I was kidding. I, I was I, I was actually, when I did that, I was like fucking around, but yeah. you didn't pull away from me. You grabbed my skull! But I didn't grab it with fucking, like, a, a with clamp. With your hands! Well, I'm not a fucking... I didn't hold you there. <laughs> you did. That's what you're doing with your hands. Well, you didn't have to close your eyes and pick up your leg, faggot. This isn't happy uh, look, days. Look, you're not going to turn this around and say, I'm gay because you grabbed my head and kissed me look, on the I've mouth. Look, I've had a hard life. Whatever I do isn't gay. Yeah, well, I you do. You have choices. Guys. You have choices, son. That's all I'm saying. I didn't have a choice. I'm trying to help you make choices in life. You've had all a right? hard life, Bobby? Yeah, we've all had a hard life. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? We've all... Everybody at this table is a fucking piece of uh, shit that's been tossed what, around. What are you going to do? Refuse. How we are? We're just a bunch of fucking... Why did Otto take his uh, mic screen off? Oh, it smelled too much like that furniture breath? Febreze shit. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I was getting dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's huffing. <laughs> <laughs> What a mess. <laughs> uh, stunk. <laughs> that fucking lady called to see if her friend was dead. Holy shit. That's amazing. What a cunt. When you were taking the steroids, uh, they talk about road, uh, road, uh, roid, rage. roid rage. Excuse me. I, did you feel any of that? Did you feel differently, no. psychologically? No. 
Not really. I, I was not too heavy into them. I mean, I took them, I thought, fairly, uh, yeah. you know, practically. Because it leads to the Chris uh, Benoit uh, situation. A lot of people said he had the roid rage. Well, he might have had some roid rage. I mean, I, and I don't doubt that steroids could have been a contributing factor, but I don't never believe for a second that they were the deciding factor in that. Yeah, we've talked to a lot of you guys since that happened, and they, they're all just shocked that he would ever do anything like that. Chris was one of the nicest guys you could ever meet. He was kind of one of those guys that for the whole time I ever knew him, he'd walk a little old lady across the street kind of guy. <laughs> he was a nice guy that uh, I think you got to look at more to uh, judge him by that kind of... What, of his character what do you think that. happened? Do you think that there's rumors he might have had like some kind of seizure or something going on in his head that was undetected? That just I think he had. I think that the you, if you look close and as they have, I think you'll find that it was probably related to all those head injuries that he had. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm. <clears throat> I heard his head, his brain was like mush at the end. Like it was just he had the brain of a 90 year old uh, Alzheimer kind of guy. He was he was I think pretty fuzzy in the head. And I know from my own circumstance with concussions that. You can have a concussion as bad as I did, and I had a really bad one, and um, I still have lingering effects from that. Jeez. And um, when you have a concussion, you can still, I can remember Vince McMahon talking about how he used to try, he could catch airplanes, he could rent his car, he could drive to the building, and it's like, how, how messed up is this guy? It's like, well, you know, I was like a robot. I was like a robot for two years, and I couldn't, I, I, I could do everything. I could have a conversation like I am with you guys right now. As a matter of fact, I think I was doing a book tour back then and doing a lot of media and all this stuff. I don't remember any of it. It was wow. all just a blur, you know? Damn. So people don't know. They think, oh, he's fine. I just talked to him. Yeah. He can talk. You just can't remember anything he said. You know, I wouldn't remember anything that I talked to you about. It's like being out in a blackout, an alcoholic blackout. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Probably. And I think, Chris, um, I don't know exactly what the circumstances were, but I think my gut feeling tells me that he was in a situation where... Um, he was getting pressured or a lot of pressure put on him by his wife to be home more and at the same time I think he was getting a lot of pressure on the from the wrestling company to say look we need if you want to be the, one of the top guys we need more we need you on the road more so he's in this horrible tug of war with his wife and the and the business and I think he in the end that was maybe what it just drove him off the deep end maybe he came home and they had a fight or something I don't it know it just snapped mm. you know? wow Wow, 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 wow. It's just, a, it's just so much uh, tragedy in wrestling. Yeah. It really is odd because it's such a you know entertaining, uh, uh, a fun thing to it's watch. It's a cartoon world. And then, yeah, yeah, it, it, on the outside, but then you tear away just a little bit of that curtain, and it's just full of tragedy. Just unbelievable. Wow. Did you watch... Did you watch um, or the Hogan's reality show. Did you like that show, or did you think it was just all crap? I I used to watch it a little bit, but there was the end. It was nothing good. A lot of oh divorce, God. wife, this, that. Hulk Hogan can be a nice guy, or yeah. he can be the phoniest, phoniest faggot in the world. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go serious for a moment. I I heard, uh, and 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 I'm not goofing on this. That uh, you got really sad talking about uh, Chris Benoit. I'll be honest with you. I saw him last time. Uh, Pens uh, what do you call it? Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And he come to me. He said, Shiki Baba, I live faith with Georgia. I said, I said, I live faith with Georgia 45 years. And he said, I'm alone. And, and, and I miss the uh, friend. Come see me. I said, no problem. That was the last time I see Chris Benoit. He's a Canadian, mm -hmm. I'm Iranian or American, whatever. So, but, if, but Chris Benoit killed himself one thing, but he killed his baby, seven years old, ah. give the baby, shot the deck up, and you kill the baby, kill his wife. I don't think she did a good thing. No, that's no, a, no, that's not, a very not a really bad good thing. Do I'm right? Yeah, yeah very that's, bad. You know, very bad, yes. God bless you. I think we could all look at that and say it was bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a very bad. You, The man, if he had the balls, he would to kill himself once. But if he killed the little baby seven years old. That's crazy. That, that's, that's a little bit cheap heat. Because yeah. that's a cheap heat. See, I'll get my head on the ring before I do anything foolish. And I still show. But Chris Ben was a young man, little girl. He want to be a big girl like Arun Sheik. He didn't make it. Right. 
What? I hear you. Yeah. Wow. Oh, more Sergeant Slaughter in there. Wow. We were just watching clips and then Iron Sheik. Amazing. I clicked what on the What a day. What, what a, a day. day. Exactly. Right. What a day. What a day. What a day. What a day. Anthony O.P. What a day. Exactly. Fantastic day. Wow. Uh, who got a birthday wish today? Young. Danny Benoit. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. I'm sure Danny Benoit mm. would appreciate a birthday announcement on this uh, fucking wintry day. Yeah, There's, he'd be sitting there nice. watching because the, uh, yeah. his family probably that that sent it in probably went like, "Oh, why don't you watch this?" And he's like, "Why am I watching the news?" He's like, "Don't worry, just sit and watch." Here's the problem, Danny Benoit. Yeah, based on the picture they showed, is actually Daniel. Benoit, the son of former pro wrestler Chris Benoit, who murdered oh, that's, oh, murdered oh, his oh, oh. wife and and child before committing right, so this suicide. Is, so oh. this is one of the child, uh, one of the children that made it. Oh. So he's probably no, no, depressed no. today. That he doesn't have a father and a mother and a sibling. So oh, there he is at my. home and getting a little uh, sunshine. Daniel ben Benoit was was choked to death by his father, oh, Chris Benoit. But that no. doesn't make sense. Then why would there be a birthday announcement for him, Sam? I think it's a hoax. A hoax. A hoax? I think yeah. it's a fugazi. <laughs> it's a fugazi. Fucking fugazi. Oh, no, this is terrible. Well, let's uh, take a listen I to this. Nye. Yes. Okay, this is, is an I nye, nye moment. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Strap in. Happy 10th birthday to Danny Benoit. He likes to play Xbox, lacrosse, and just talk on the phone. Happy <laughs> birthday, Danny, from your wrestling chums, Vinny, Christopher, Eric, Sam, Greg, Tony, and Uncle Paul. If you'd like to see your champion on our... Um, oh, see. Oh, my he, he God. He can't do likes... any of those things, Sam, because he's dead. He was also... Uh, he likes to talk on the phone. He was... Why talk on the phone? That's a weird one. No, he was choked. He was choked with, with a phone cord. The phone cord. What? Yep. Yes, yes. That's it. By his father, professional wrestler Chris Benoit. Th this oh, could Jesus be Christ. the Are worst one I've ever heard. Me? This what? is the worst one I've ever heard. You mentioned uh, Benoit there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you couldn't write a book without mentioning it. And that's the thing about this book that's different from the first one. There are a lot of, a, like, it's a little bit of an emotional roller coaster, and there's some really heavy, deep things to talk about but especially in the benoit situation it was so cool for me to uh not cool but cathartic i guess is the word to to write about this and get it out of my system to put on the printed page so now i don't ever really have to talk about it if you want to know yeah, my right thoughts and issues you can just read about it and were you guys close he was my best friend in wrestling yeah, yeah absolutely man. yeah that's absolutely beyond crazy. so that's why i mean you had to i had to deal with did this you, did you see, i just want to ask one did you see him changing did you see any, any well, I, I talk about it in the book in the book I, you didn't you saw him changing a lot uh after eddie guerrero died because eddie was was mm. his best 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 friend and um but he was you know he was a great guy very polite very positive like a me like a mentor at first and then and then became a very good friend but he was a very a strange strange guy like especially when you look back and that's kind of what i talk about a lot certain things that happened years before would be like he he wouldn't laugh at something that was like the, the funniest bit you'd ever seen you know like you know i don't know, dumb and dumber or something ridiculous like that and if you played that for him he would just Sit there and kind of like go, you know, nothing. And you don't you think this is funny? Oh, huh. it's funny. It's I'm, I'm laughing inside. Oh, that type shit. of thing. And yeah. then if somebody threw up on the street, he would find that the funniest thing. So that type of a guy, you know. <laughs> right. So and, and like, like I said, I, it's it's interesting to 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 kind of separate this guy that I knew for 15, 16, 18 years. Wow. With from the guy in the last two or three days of his life. I mean, it's a very, it's a very strange, you know, talking about it. And you want to laugh and stuff, but then there's always this black cloud right. hanging over of it. Course, but yeah. I think I, I tried to explain to people that didn't know that he was, you know, he was a human being. He was, you know, he, had, he was, he wasn't just some kind of a crazy maniac monster. He was a great guy. Loved his family. Loved his kids. I would have left my kids with him and had no problems, no wow. reservations, yeah. more than almost anybody else, you know, uh, in the world. I would have left them with him. So. Uh, that's why to be able to write about it and kind of dig into it a bit was very, uh, like I said, very cathartic for me, and uh, I'm glad I was able to do that. You guys are almost like fucking like soldiers on a battlefield because a lot of wrestlers have have died, and oh, yeah, at, yeah. at, at uh, much younger ages than than they're supposed to. Uh, how do you deal with stuff like that? Because it is almost like you you would get a uh, post traumatic stress 
Yeah, you know from what? from some of this stuff. You certainly know a lot, lot of your these, buddies dying. Like yeah, that. you know a lot of them pretty yeah, pretty man. well. That uh, have yeah, passed. I mean, like I said, Eddie was a great friend of mine too, and that his his death is in there too. Uh, you know, it, it's what the worst part of it is. It really desensitizes you. I mean, mm. in, my, in my first book, I wrote about uh, this guy called Art Bar that that passed away. It was a friend of mine that I worked with in Mexico, Jesus. and that was the first guy that I'd ever knew that that had died. You know, of, of drugs. Since then, I could probably tell you, and this is not a not a joke. Probably forty f guys and girls that I was friends with, or knew, or was best friends with in some cases that have, that have that have passed Jesus away. Jesus Christ! So yeah, it is. 40, it, it's, yeah. it's 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 crazy. But you become. It's like oh, you hear so and so died. It's like well, you know, I, I saw that coming. Or, well, and again, that's coming. exactly what I'm talking about. Like like if, if, if you hear soldiers talk about going yeah. out. And the first time one of their buddies gets it or something, uh, they're they're freaking out. And then after a full tour or two tours, yeah. it becomes like you almost become like I don't want to be friends with anybody right. because you don't want to get too attached. Yeah, or, yeah. The good thing is that the business has changed now, so it's really I mean it's almost if you're like I kind of came in right in between old and new, mm -hmm. so I had that crazy side but never got into the real serious stuff. Yeah. But now guys are they play video games and and. Guitar Hero, and you know they don't do anything, and it's like you guys are really lame now. But it's you know, <laughs> yeah, you, went, you, you know, swung to the really <laughs> yeah, lame. Exactly, exactly. Did, was it the schedule you guys had to keep? I just think it's just the way it was. If you look at guys in the '80s, or you know, even rock bands, right, '70s, '80s, thing. you exactly. know, they're all is crazy. Happening. '90s bands now aren't doing the same thing. It's crazy. We, you know? we it's talk not about like that because we've been around long enough now where we were backstage seeing all these bands right. party yeah. and like just out of their minds, and now they're like. You know, juicing, literally yeah. juicing carrots and fucking what? apple juice and having a salad. And yeah, it's like, who know. are these guys? They're supposed to be rock stars. But, you know, Zach and I, when we first met, <gasps> it was nuts. I mean, we used to, we used to get loaded and then go play uh, pedestrian, pedestrian chicken, where you would lie in the middle of the street. In like you know, in, in downtown Manhattan at like four in the morning, and just lie there. And it's like, well, nobody's gonna run you over. Just see if cars will come. What like you'd be fuck? that that fucking loaded, yeah. where you're just gonna lie in the street. I dare someone to run me over. Like that's smart, right? Yeah. Now. The last time, a couple times we've hung out, you know, we're drinking tea, and it's like Zach's totally straight now, and so you don't want to drink in front of him. And as you move on in life, if you're lucky enough to get past that stuff and still be alive, you have to kind of really appreciate that yeah. and not fuck around with it. You It'd know? be great songs were almost not written. <laughs> you know, how many right. fucking riffs would have been missed? Right, <laughs> pedestrian <laughs> chicken. One, sh one shitty cab could have ended a lot of great riffs. <laughs> yeah. That would have been depressing.